We are going to make a measured drawing today in Onshape. So let's get started. Uh, we finished our builds. You can see there's some other models I've done here as well. Uh, let's jump into build three. And let's make a drawing of build three. All right, so here's our part. We're gonna rotate around, take a look at it. Looks awesome. Now, if you compare what we have to the drawing we started with, this drawing is called an isometric measured drawing and every bit of information that you need is available in one drawing. So it's very compact, it's really nice. Um, but it's also common to have a set of drawings from multiple views that actually make it a little bit easier to figure out where all the pieces are and the shapes, etc. So what we're gonna do is create a set of four drawings in one for build number three. So let's do it. Let's do, we have a part. We're gonna right click on that part. And we're gonna create a drawing of that part. Now, you've got lots of templates. I have chosen four views, an ANSI inch template. Although that doesn't work for this one. So let's go ahead and choose a different one. Show the drawing templates. We want the millimeter template because our drawing is in millimeters. So we'll go ahead and select that. And it is gonna create a drawing with four views. This is super cool. It's gonna do the work for us, I'm excited. You see me moving. So there's our isometric view, which I mean, honestly, right off the top, that looks rad. Like, yes, that's the thing we made right there. How cool is that? But you'll notice we have a top, a front, and a side view as well. And we're gonna use these additional views and the dimension tool to lay out measurements. So what we're gonna do is we take all the information from here and lay it out on the diagram. And we're actually gonna place the measurements on these three parts of the drawing and not on the isometric. And that really has to do with how Onshape deals with dimensions for an isometric view. It, it scales them uh, in a way that makes them look inaccurate. They aren't inaccurate, but it looks inaccurate. So. Here's what we're gonna do. I'll give you an example. Let's grab the dimension tool and I wanna take this dimension that's 100 across and I'm gonna go from that corner to that corner and look at that. Because we measured this thing correctly, I don't have to define that shape, it's already defined. So I know that's 100 by 100. I also wanna go from say this side all the way across and that should be 50 which it is, that looks good. What other dimensions would I wanna put on this thing? I think I'd wanna put this little dimension in front. You know how on our drawing it says there's 46 from the back to the front? We could do that. We could go from here to here and show 46, but I actually don't wanna do that. I would rather, if I'm conveying some information, I like that this four millimeter. I think that's cleaner, I like that. You still have to do a subtraction problem, like you know that the distance from the back to here is 50 minus 4, but I like that, so I'm going to keep that one. Let's see, what other ones would be really good to fit on the top view that would be really helpful? Well, none of this vertical information is going to go on the top view. I'm not going to put it there. None of that thickness or height information. Really, I just, if I look down at the features, there's this thickness right here. So I'm gonna go from there to there. That thickness is 15. I like it. And you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually drag this dimension. I'm gonna press escape. Grab and drag that dimension out and this one inside. And you'll notice me doing that just to kind of clean these up to make them look good. You also can take and pull that 15 outside and I'm sure that there are good rules for draftsmen on how to do this in a way that makes it very readable. Um, and I undoubtedly am not f***ing those rules because I don't know them. So my goal here is to make sure that it's readable. That if I was going to hand this to somebody and say, here, go make this part, they'd have the information that they need. Let's see. I don't know that I need the wall thickness. I could put it in there, but I don't want to add more dimensions than I need. So I think the last thing I'm going to do is just talk about these circles here. So the center of the circle, actually, you know what? This distance right here, see that 15 plus 15? 
I think I'm going to do it in that same way. So I'm going to grab the dimension tool and go to the center of the circle. Notice how that highlights to here. And there's 15. I'm going to do it like they did it. There's 15 to there. And then I'm going to go from the center of the circle to the outer edge. And there's another 15. So I like that. That's good. And then there's this additional 15 on that circle. They've put the measurement on this side, probably just because there was a lot of stuff going on over here. And that's pretty true for our diagram as well. So I think I will take the center of the circle to this edge and move the 15 over here. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Again, my goal is readability here, and this 4 and this 15 are now fighting each other. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Do I want to put the 4 inside? No, I don't. I could put the 4 right there. No. What if I put the 4 here and the 15 here? I don't love it. I think it's confusing. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the 15 back here. I'm going to put the four back where it was and call it good. Okay. So I like that. I think that's, that's a decent perspective here. Let me zoom back out. Uh, and I press the F key to have it focus on to fill the whole screen here. All right. So now for the front piece, what dimensions do I want? I definitely want a thickness. So I'm going to go for this piece here. That's 15. Uh, what else do I want? I probably want the center of that circle. That's going to matter. Um, they measured it as a distance off this piece here. So that's 25. I like that. Um, what other dimensions did they give us on that front edge? So we have that circle center information. We're going to need to talk about its radius. So let's do that. Um, and you know what? I'm realizing now I didn't actually give a radius to that circle. So let's use the dimension tool and go back and put some radius information in here. So that's a radius of 12. And will it let me add two holes? I haven't done this part yet, but I think it's going to work. Nice. Okay, that's clean. I really like that. Two holes at 12. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so dimension tool for this one, that's a radius of 12. I like it, I like it. Notice how here it reports diameter and here it reports radius. It's because we don't have a full circle, here we do. So it defaults to diameter for that measurement and radius for that measurement. That's pretty slick. Let's see, and then do we have some width information? How did we know left to right where that circle was? And I don't think we have a dimension on this diagram that shows that this center is, the circle is in the center of the object. I would really like to add that dimension though. It's implied, but I'm still, I'm still going to add it. Center of the circle to here. That's 12. Hmm. You know what? I think that information becomes redundant. I'm going to leave it. What other information do I want here? I need to make notes about the chamfers, right? Like this note at the bottom, I would need to make those notes. Can I make those notes somewhere in here? I don't know. I bet there's an option to just add a note. Let's go look. Um, how do I search for tools? Datum, note, love it. All right, so let's make our note right here. Our note says, note, one, all fillets, four, equals R, 15 mm. How do I make this thing bigger? Oh boy, can I resize that? Yes, I can, awesome. And then what's my other note? Two. See, I have to line those up. I just have to, I have to make it look right. Chamfers are 
45 degrees. Ooh, how do I make a degree symbol? I don't know. Fifteen mm by fifteen mm. Good. Now I just want to resize my note because it's hard to read here. Oh man. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do with my format. I think we should say notes. Probably not. I'm sure they said note for a reason. I'll change my mind. Note. And then we'll move this one back. And everything's going to fit nicely. Okay, cool. So I got my notes. I've got my front dimension information. I think I probably want height as well from here to here. So we'll call that 50. That's good. What other information would I want from the front on? I know about that geometry. I know about that geometry. I know that that's in the center. I am going to do that. I'm going to go from center to edge. Call that 50. Do I need to know about the thickness? I don't need to know about the dimension from here to here because notice that these drawings are vertically aligned. So the distance from here to here is 15 and 15. That's the same one here because Onshape has vertically aligned my drawings. Awesome. Gets me excited. You can see that. Okay, so I don't need to talk about the chamfers here because those are in there. I need to talk about this circle. And I have the back wall thickness, but I'll probably... It is redundant to put it in here, but I'm going to put it in here to here is 15. I know that height is 15 because I can carry it across. Definitely need a circle's radius information. Okay, and then I also need to know how far it is from here to here for that circle. And they have it right in the middle, that's interesting. I'm gonna go like that, I like that. And then this dimension that goes down 15 from the top. So I'm gonna do that as well. So let's see, I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna move the circle radius. How's that look? Confusing. That's how it looks. Looks confusing. Can I put the 15 back in the middle? Yeah. That's better. That's cleaner. I like it. Can I put that 15 in the middle? Oh, I like that. And then can I move this? Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Except that arrow gets a little confusing. It won't. Oh flipped it over. <laughs> That's a little funky, but that works. I don't like it. Nope. Doesn't work. Don't like it. We'll leave that there. All right. So I have that dimension. I have this little dimension of four right here, but that could get lost. So I'm going to add it. Four. Off the front edge, we have our thickness. All right, so the last thing to do is to add your name and the date, and then you can export this thing as a variety of formats. What's nice about this is you can quickly hand a sheet to somebody that can give you an idea of whether or not it fits, uh, and this will be part of our process for having you uh, get your parts 3D printed at Gizmo. Thanks for watching.